Hi there, I'm Joshua Hanlon and today I'm exploring the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum outside of Cairns, Australia. This museum is a massive hangar full of artillery and armored vehicles stretching all the way from the First World War to today. And it represents many, many different countries from the United States, Canada, Russia, Japan, Germany, Australia. There's a lot of Australian vehicles represented here, so you get a really good overview um, of world history when looking at all of these different pieces of armor and artillery and there's over 150 pieces here so you can spend a number of hours exploring all of the different vehicles. Uh, a lot of them have kind of the hatches open and stuff so you can see inside and really get a good idea of what the vehicles were like. There's some cool uh, bonus additions here as well to the museum. They have a shooting gallery as well where you can shoot a number of different uh, historical weapons that's pretty fun. They also have a Vietnam era armored personnel carrier that you can take rides in at a couple different times throughout the day as well. So if the weather's good enough and it's not too rainy or not too dry and dusty out, then they run those a couple times a day too. So uh, that's a lot of fun to, to check out as well. So let's stay nice and hydrated and make sure to bring your water or you can pick up your own uh, themed bottle of water here at the museum and take a closer look at some of the tanks in the museum here. One of the biggest pieces in the museum's collection is the Russian 2S7 Peon self-propelled gun behind me. Uh, this has been the most powerful conventional piece of artillery since entering service in 1983. It's so powerful, in fact, that it has to have a five-second warning signal before being fired because soldiers who are unprepared can be physically incapacitated by the force of the weapon being fired. And it's just absolutely massive here uh, and incredible to walk around and uh, look at this uh, piece of weaponry. This is an M3 Grant tank that's been converted into a piece of farm equipment and has a really fascinating story here. So we'll walk around and take a closer look as I tell you about it. So after the end of World War II, the Australian Army found themselves with a massive surplus of hundreds of these tanks and armored vehicles that they weren't really sure what to do with. So they started auctioning them off around the country to uh, farmers and other people who would use them uh, for construction equipment and just general farm equipment. As you can see, uh, that's what happened with this one here. And the crazy thing about these is they would be sold from anywhere from 50 to 100 pounds at the time and then just be driven away as is, which means a lot of these still had the turrets on them. They still had all their armor. Some of them you know, they included the weapons as well. So you would just see these kind of rolling down the road after uh, the person who bought it drove it away from the auction. They just might have had their tank or whatever uh, and would just drive it away. And so then later the farmers or whoever bought it would modify it to take off the turret uh, and the extra armor and that sort of thing to make it lighter to use it as farm equipment uh, like you see here. But uh, definitely uh, one of the more interesting stories that the, the vehicles can tell here at the Tank Museum. Next to me now is a British bar mine layer, and so this laid bar mines, which are different than the typical round mines that I think most people would be used to seeing, but the bar mine had the advantage of covering a wider area, which increased the probability of blowing something up because uh, there was more area under the ground that the tank or whatever it was trying to blow up could run over. So the way this worked was it would be towed by, say, an armored personnel carrier, and you can see based on this photo right here uh, that the, the guy loading the mines could be inside there and run them down the track uh, to 
the layer and so if we look underneath here you've got kind of a cutter there that would cut up the ground a bit you've got the plower that would open the ground up and then the line the mine would be laid and then these two ovals here would kind of push the dirt back over it and so all within this one machine it could lay the mines down and then cover them up back up and so it could lay you know hundreds of mines uh, easily that way as uh, the loaders put them in Now we're in the part of the museum known as the Wehrmacht Hall, where all of the World War II uh, German tanks and self-propelled guns and artillery are located, as well as various other interesting pieces of uh, German war history here from the Second World War. And I want to point out something interesting here. This is a German Tiger I tank. And what makes this uh, such kind of a cool piece is that it was actually used as a model in the movie Fury that came out uh, a few years ago. So for that movie, it wasn't a fully uh, drivable tank. They just kind of made the shell of it and put it on kind of a slab that they could pull around to give the effect of a tank. So then when the museum got it here, they actually turned it into a drivable tank. And you can see from the dirt and mud in the treads that they've been driving it around. So, uh, so a lot of this stuff has kind of an interesting backstory like that from before the museum got it. Behind me now is a British breech loading six inch howitzer and this is a really good example of how restoration is a big part of what happens here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum because the parts for this gun were taken from a few different spots. Some of them were stuff that farmers had bought at auction, others had been used as target practice by the military, uh, but the restorers here at the museum were able to take all these different parts and put together and restore this weapon. And so even as we're working on this video, uh, there have been people around the museum uh, working on different restoration projects. So that's a big part of how they keep all these vehicles restored and up and running here. If you want to visit the museum, it's located just outside of Cairns here in Australia and it's $25 for an adult to get in or $18 for a student. And there's several other activities right nearby that I would also suggest checking out. So the Sky Rail to explore the rainforest is right next door. There's a great uh, wakeboarding uh, water sports activity area just down the road as well uh, if you're into that. And then about 15 minutes down the road is a laser tape go-kart track area. So there's a number of other activities here. You could come out and do the museum as well as some of those other activities and kind of make a whole day of it. If you rent a car or take an Uber or a taxi out here, it's very simple to get here from downtown uh, Cairns.